it's an epidemic. I mean, it's a crisis to have people living unsheltered on the street, and you can really feel it when something like this happens. I mean, this is this is when people living without um, in sanitary conditions is is um, not only inhumane and, and problematic and all that, but it's just a big issue for everybody. As the world grinds to a halt in efforts to prevent the spread of the deadly coronavirus, my newspaper set out to discover how it's upending lives across the region. I wanted to find out how all of you were feeling and how you were coping. And I wanted to do it all without ever having to come into contact with you as a way to help prevent the spread of the virus. Here's what I came up with, the COVID Diaries. It's a series of interviews, all conducted over video chat, that take the temperature of a community in a time of dramatic upheaval. Is this my camera? Am I looking the right way? Yeah. If I look this way? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, cool. Um, so my name is Steph Johnson, and I started Voices Over City Choir about three and a half years ago, almost four years. Um, it's a choir created for people experiencing homelessness. It's grown to 250 members. We raise money through performances and donations. We're a 501c3, and um, we have hired our own case managers and peer advocates, people with lived experience who turn around and help people living on the street. And we have empowered successfully like 55 choir members to move off the street and into housing or safe shelter. So for your choir members who are still experiencing homelessness, I mean, what is life like right now and what is the concern for them? Choir members that are living on the street, um, it's been it's really hard to kind of keep that communication fluid when somebody's on the street just because um, it's, as you know, as we, you can imagine, the, it's really hard to keep that phone charged. And um, one of our choir members, we just we just got a hold of him, and he doesn't sound good at all. So um, I'm glad that he finally touched out, you know, connected with us. Um, but it's a struggle. I mean, my programs manager, who talked to him, said that he sounded the worst he's ever sounded. And um, you know, I, I want the city and the county to move swiftly. I don't want to have another Hepe crisis. Um, this is a big issue like that. And the city, you know, is, is pretty, pretty much their method to dealing with homelessness is criminalizing homelessness and, and giving people tickets. So who's going to be the one on the street saying, okay, now we're here to help you <laughs> if, they're in a, if they're in a uniform that just gave them a ticket? You know, this, it could really explode in this community. So in San Diego, I mean, where, where are we going to put everybody? I mean, I'm really like, you know, but but I'm, you know, going to work with the community and work and, and encourage the county and the city and my elected officials to um, be super vigilant like we are and um, be on it, you know, like to, if, if there's hotel rooms that become available, then let's move people into hotel rooms and let's take blocks of those and manage those and make sure that people have what they need. But then... How sad will this all be when that ends? I'm just thinking like, and then we have to ask people to move out back to the street. Yeah. I know of you uh, without having spoken to you before, but just for everything I've read that you are a person who uh, in, in crisis, your response is mostly to act, but certainly you must be like feeling as well. Uh, what what are you feeling? Um, I, well, the first, when it really hit me last week, you know, I was panicked. I mean, my husband and I went to the grocery store and I was like freaking out over a bunch of bananas. And he was, I was like, get all the bananas. And he's like, why are you getting all the bananas? You don't even like bananas. And so I went through like this, it, I think it's normal. Everyone kind of hits a panic button. Right now I'm, I'm, um, I feel okay. I, I, I've understand a little bit more about the, the, um, the virus and how it's being transmitted. I also had a bout with pneumonia and bronchitis like seven months ago. I was on and off bed rest with a bronchial issue for seven months. So I'm just recovering from that. So I'm definitely taking the precautions I need to as, you know, for that reason. But um, yes, we went into action, absolutely. A choir member called me and he um, he's had a stroke and um, he's this beautiful Buddhist veteran. He's very, he's sweet. He's a he's a photographer. He called me and, and he was kind of stumbling over his words. And I was like, well, are you hungry? Like, do you need food? And I said, well, why don't I bring you some rice and beans and chicken? And <clears throat> he was like, yes, thank you. Thank you. And so I just was like, that's it. I called my whole crew and I was like, let's, let's start making food. And I posted some photos on social media of us distributing the food, you know, and, and getting it to them. And there's, that's the cool thing about this is there's an uprising of the community. I, I mean, I was contacted by growers, by case managers, by government that want to act swiftly. So, um, 
if, if, if there's space available, if there's food available, and if there's treatment available, we have to figure out a way to get that information to everybody. And so uh, how about the choir? Y'all are still running in some capacity? Yeah, so we moved all of our workshops and choir rehearsal to um, online. We do like a private group on Facebook. Um, of course, we have a lot of members and a lot of people that maybe don't, you know, access online stuff like that that often. But we had about 50 people that participated on Friday and, and it actually made us feel super connected. Um, the weekend before this outbreak, we got to audition for America's Got Talent for season 15. And we had this really incredible experience. There was about 50 of us in Pasadena. And so we had this incredible moment. And then we had this incredible meeting on Wednesday to talk about it. And then Thursday, everything changed where it was like, every, you know, stay home. We have to cancel this, this meeting place. It's really become a place of love and hope. And it's like a vortex. It's a healing vortex we've created. So uh, the online classes, the workshops have made that possible to continue on. And people have said they've really, really, really appreciated that. Um, and I have a little snippet of a song that I did that I'll, um, I'll share with you. Oh, if, awesome. Yeah. And of course, I mean, it's mostly me singing, but, but everybody told me they were singing at home. <laughs> they were really singing. So you can play the game. You can act out the part, even though you know it wasn't written for you. Do you, do you have any choir members who you think would get on, on video call with me at some point? Yeah, he's, he's here actually. Okay, one. Me and my friend Sam. Say hey. Hello oh, Sam, how you doing? Oh, one you? thing can lead it to another. It doesn't take any sacrifice. Oh, father and mother, sister and brother. Oh, it feels nice. Don't you think twice? Just shower the people you love with love. Show them the way that you feel. Things are gonna work out fine if you only will. Hey. You can run, but you cannot hide. This is why they know. Oh, and what you plan to do with your foolish pride when you're all by yourself alone.